Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's create some obstacle geometry. Obstacle geometry is going to be areas where we need to leave space for things like hardware or tool access. When we start thinking about generative design, we need to think more about the areas we need to omit geometry rather than working on connecting our mounting points like we do with the traditional design process. To get started, we're going to go into the Edit Model Workspace. I'm going to rotate this around just slightly. And we want to start building off of our preserve regions that we need for our frame. So we need to find out where we need to leave access for the head of hardware, also access for the tools, and just the bolts themselves. So we're going to get started by selecting this outside face and creating a sketch. Because this face and this face are in the same plane, I'm going to use P on the keyboard to project that geometry, so that way I have both. Then I'm going to stop my sketch and start my extrude tool. I'm using the standard quick keys on the keyboard that you would use in the design workspace, such as E for extrude and P for project. We're going to get started by selecting both the ID and OD circles, and we're going to do that on both bosses, the front and the back. We're going to pull this geometry out 80 millimeters, and of course you can enter this value into the dialog box. And we also want to make sure that we're creating new bodies. We're not joining it with any of our preserve regions or the motor itself. So as we take a look at this, you can see that the distance is coming out quite a bit and likely our frame won't be in that area. So I'm going to reduce this value down to 50 millimeters. Then I'm going to say OK. And I want to go back into Model Components, back into my Sketches folder, and I want to show Sketch 14. From here, we're going to extrude again, and this time we want to select the smaller circle, and we're going to be extruding toward the motor itself. This time we're going to go a distance of minus 70 millimeters, and we want to go ahead and make this a new body as well. Now using Modify, we're going to use the Combine tool and take the first boss extrude and the smaller center section. Sometimes it can be hard to select, so you might need to hold down the left mouse button and select the body you want using the dialog box. I'm going to use my right-click marking menu to repeat that. And this time I want to make sure that I'm combining this rear boss with the smaller center section as well and saying OK. Now I can hide Sketch 14. One thing that I like to do when I'm working inside of this Edit Model workspace is hit A on the keyboard to bring up Appearances. And I like to turn this geometry red or green when I'm working inside here just so that I know exactly if I'm creating an obstacle or a preserve region. The colors in here will not be affected when we get back into the generative design workspace. Now that we've taken a look at a basic way to create that geometry using our standard sketches and extrudes, let's take a look at some of the tools that we have available to us inside of here. We want to take a look at what's called the connector obstacle. Now this is a quick way for us to replicate the geometry we just created. The first thing I want to do is select the start of the shaft, and then I need to select the back, or I need to enter a shaft length. Now in this case, I'm going to enter a value of minus 70, which is the same thing we did on the other side. One of the benefits here is we actually have the available option to create the head of the bolt as well. Now if we want to select the diameter of that bolt or manually enter that value, you see that we can manipulate these values on the screen using our manipulators we can manually enter that value, or we can do any other combination that we need to in order to get that geometry. So the head length currently is 15.75, but we made this 50 millimeters on the other side, and now we can say OK. One of the benefits to using this methodology is that when we get back into the generative design workspace, this will already be selected as an obstacle. That, and we didn't have to go through the process of creating a sketch, doing an extrude, and then combining geometry. Let's replicate this process on the back side. Again, using our marking menu to repeat, we're going to start here. And again, the distance is going to be minus 70. Then for the bolt head, the diameter is going to be 35 millimeters. And the distance is going to be 50. We'll say OK. And now we've created that geometry. We're not quite done as we need to create a bit more geometry for this model. The next area that we want to focus on is the upper shock. 
We have our preserve regions where we need our frame to connect. However, we need to create a bolt or some sort of obstacle so that way we have room to not only insert the hardware but access it. So again, we're going to use this connector obstacle. And this time we're going to go from one edge selection to the next. This will start by creating the inside portion of the shaft. Then we want to make sure that we use bolt head. And in this case, we're going to be creating again a bolt head that simply matches the diameter of our preserve region, which is going to be 50 millimeters. We want to make sure that we input the head length. And in this case, we want to use a value of 100 millimeters. One of the great options inside of this connector obstacle is the available option to do both sides. So this will automatically replicate the head diameter and length on the other side of our frame. Once we're done, we simply need to say OK, and now we've created that obstacle. Again, I like to use A for appearance, and I like to color this red. This is a great way for us to see that it is one single body. There's a lot more that we need to create in terms of obstacles, but the next thing that we want to focus on is going to be the front area where the frame connects to the stem or head tube. Now this area, we really don't want to restrict the design too much, but we need to make sure that we're driving the direction of the frame so that way it's not going through the forks and it's not going through any additional geometry that we want to avoid. So we're going to start by sketching on the bottom face of the head tube. And this can get a little complicated because we have a lot of additional components and bodies. So I'm going to use the slice option. I'm going to rotate this slightly and I'm going to use P for project and bring in these outer edges. And then I want to create a circle at the center of this with a 50 millimeter diameter. Now that we have some geometry here, I'm going to select this face and I'm going to use my look at option which will take me back normal to my sketch plane. The next thing that we want to do is create a line that goes from our 50 millimeter circle over to the other one here. So I'm going to use L on the keyboard for my line tool. And if we're snapping into other geometry, you can always go in and hide other model components if needed. For example, the front end, the clip on bars. Once we remove those in the headlight, we're just dealing with our sketch geometry. So we're going to go from left to right. Then we want to make sure that we have both a horizontal line and a line that's tangent. So we'll make sure that we have tangency. And once we achieve that with both circles, it'll automatically become a horizontal line. Next, I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to draw a line going from the center of each of these circles. And this will give me this nice closed region at the back side that I can extrude. Let's go ahead and stop the sketch, bring the front end clip on bars and headlight back rotate this around and extrude it. We want to go up to the bottom side of the upper triple clamp. And then we want to make sure that we're using this as a new body. Again, using a on the keyboard, I'm going to change its color to red. This way I instantly know that the geometry I just created is going to be an obstacle or an avoidance area. Once we're done with that, let's go ahead and save so we can move on to the next step. 